In this segment, I'm going to take you through the aperture exercise. What you should know about this exercise is that it may work better if you do this outside during the day. You're more than welcome, of course, to try the exercise indoors, but if you run into issues, I'll explain later in the segment that you may want to do the exercise again outside during the day. The first thing I'll have you do is put your camera into A or AV mode and change your aperture to 5.6. If you need help with this, check your manual on how to change your aperture while in A or AV mode. Next, I want you to zoom in if you have a lens that allows you to zoom. I know I haven't told you what you're going to take a picture of yet, but go ahead and zoom in as much as possible. I'm about to show you what it is we're going to create. Many of you watching this might get excited when you see it and want to run off to take this picture, but I'll highly recommend that you stick around for the rest of the instructions before you attempt the exercise. Here's what you're going to create, and there are five guidelines to follow when you want to achieve this effect. It may seem like a lot, but once you get it, you'll have it forever. You've already completed the first two. One is to choose a small numbered aperture. The second is to zoom in. The third is that you'll need to choose an object that is smaller than a pineapple. If you'd like to photograph an object that is bigger than a pineapple, you'll need to get close enough to that subject so that you're only shooting a part of the object that is smaller than a pineapple. Guideline number four, get in close and zoom in. Whatever object you're shooting should take up about 50% of your frame. Last but not least, the background should be far away from the object. The farther away, the better. It will not work to shoot an object where the background is only inches away from the object. You'll have more success if the background is at least 10 feet or 3 meters away from the object, and better yet, if the background is 20 feet or 6 meters or more away from the object. Go and take at least one picture and come back and compare your picture with the example here. Pause this video now and go do the exercise. If you got the result you wanted, that's great. If you did not get the result you wanted, the rest of this segment will show examples of when this exercise is done incorrectly and what you can do to make adjustments so you're creating the desired effect. If you achieved the effect, you can skip to the next segment if you'd like. Here's an example of an image that's done correctly. Now I'm going to show you examples of images that were not done the right way. If your results were like any of these, I'll tell you how to fix it. This image has a blurry background, but not as blurry as the last one. If you've created an image like this, you're either too far away from the subject, not zoomed in enough, or both. If you created an image like this, get closer to the subject and zoom in more. If your background is in focus, but your subject is blurry, you've created the opposite effect of what we want. It's because your camera has focused on the background. Assuming you have your autofocus on, you may have created this kind of image because you're a little too close to the subject and you should back up slightly. Hold the shutter button down halfway before you take the shot and make sure your camera is focusing on the subject before you take the picture. This is another example of an image that doesn't quite fit the bill. In this case, the background is too close to the subject, so the background isn't blurred out. If the background is too close to the subject, depending on which lens you're using, you may not get a blurry background. Here's the correct version again. This is the end of this segment, so take time to try again if you didn't create the desired effect on your first attempt.